changing the laws, and the idea is to overwhelm uh, the state house and the state government with libertarians so they can roll back uh, a lot of the uh, unconstitutional and anti-liberty laws. So, Carla Garrick. Introduction. And first of all, I want to thank everyone who organized this event. You know, I organize our Porcupine Freedom Festival. It's a lot of work. So if you guys could give a shout out and a round of applause for everyone who worked on this, including the attendees, that would be amazing. So as Danny said, I come from the live free or die state. And those words actually mean something to me. To live free or die. Our liberty is being stolen from us every second of every day through tyranny and through totalitarianism. If any of you are locals, you were fortunate enough not to be molested to come here. Because I opted out, and of course that means you have to get you know, your secondary screening with your SS. They actually put SS on your boarding pass. I mean, they're, they're out there in the open. There is really a giant challenge that we're facing. So I want to talk to you today about what's next. I'm going to assume that most of you here are people who have worked on the Ron Paul campaign. Maybe you were someone who was actually turned on by Ron Paul. I like to think about Ron Paul as the red pull from the Matrix, right? He's, you know, that moment where you're like, oh my God, this is how the world works. It's like the scales fall from your eyes and you realize. We live in a topsy-turvy world. What we've been told is not true. What you hear on Fox News or CNN or any of those places, it's all a bunch of lies. But there is a truth, and as Ron Paul says, truth is, the tr truth is treason in the empire of lies. So I want to talk to you about truth. And the truth of the matter is we are screwed. You all probably worked really hard on campaigns. I know, you know, I found Ron Paul back in 2007, and I did my campaigning. I was in New York at the time. I lived in Chinatown with my husband. We lived in a nice little loft in Chinatown that was right next to the train tracks. I was the only person who had Ron Paul window, you know, posters in the window because the subway train comes right by the bridge, and I was like, I can reach out to people, maybe someone will know. I remember that day of excitement when I was out on Union Square and I saw one so little Ron Paul banner in a window in an apartment. And I had that realization, I'm not alone. And we're not alone. But we're too dispersed. We're too all over the place. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what the Free State Project is, because what we're trying to do is intensely unique. It's something that's never been tried before, and I actually think it is where the logical conclusion of the red pull goes. So if you, you know, went out, you tried to get signatures, you were like, we can make this happen. We can change politics at a national level. I want to tell you, ha, ha, ha. If you were a delegate in states like Maine or the other places where literally things were stolen from you, your hard work, your productivity was stolen from you by corruption. So the system itself is corrupt. And we can't fight, you know, I'm all about let's fight the power, but you can't fight the power at a national level. 
national level. It can't be done. And Ron Paul's campaign actually proved that. We spent, you know, I spent eight years of my life dedicating myself to it. And I love Dr. Paul and I have the world of respect for him. But I think we're fools if we think we're going to do it at that level. So my proposal to you today is let's do it on a local level. Let's do it as a community. You know, the police state, I grew up in South Africa, so I was born in South Africa and I won a green card. That's how I moved to America almost 20 years ago now. And so I know what a police state looks like because I was raised in a police state. And my sort of come to Jesus moment was when I was in New York and I turned around a corner and there was a guy in like musty camouflage uniform. He was a police officer. He uh, had a German shepherd. He had an AR on his back and in Chinatown. And I had that realization where I was like, you know what, this is it. We actually are facing that real police state. We see it all the time. And that's not something I want. Is that something you guys want? No? So, okay, let me tell you how we solve that problem. We solve it in New Hampshire. So the free state is basically, it's a movement to try and get 20,000 liberty lovers, libertarians, anarchists, agorists, whatever you want to call yourself, anarcho-capitalists, whatever label you want to give yourself. I like to just say, we're all human beings. So New Hampshire is an incredibly awesome state. I've lived all over the world, I've traveled all over the world, and I'm proud to call it my home. New Hampshire, what makes it appealing as a libertarian state? Well, first of all, there's no sales tax, which is pretty awesome because that means we get all our business from Massachusetts, Vermont, Maine. People come in and they trade in the free market. It also has no state personal income tax. And that's really important because income tax is a form of slavery. Hampshire actually has zero property taxes. So one of the interesting things in New Hampshire, of course, is because we don't have some of the big ticket taxes, the money's got to come somewhere to run government. And um, so it's pretty much on property taxes. There are several state, uh, several areas in the northern part of the state that have no property taxes. So if you were to move there and buy in that area, you could actually not be paying sales tax, not be paying income tax, and also not be paying property tax. And I think that's a really interesting and awesome proposal. New Hampshire is also rated consistently the best place to live, the freest place to live. It's also, you know, there are uh, various reports that actually say when people are more free, they are happier. So I like to say New Hampshire is actually also the happiest place to live. Now I know someone's going to say, but it's so cold in the <laughs> Why is it so cold? It's so cold because, you know, well, I'm saying two things. One is, if global warming is true and Al Gore is right, which I highly doubt, but let's say he is, it's going to be pretty awesome to be there in about 10 years' time. Otherwise, you know, we do have technology and we do have heaters and all of those things. And then we also have the option, I think, as humans in the world to say, well, I can choose a place as my domicile, but I can still sit, you know, travel, I can be a sunbird, I can be up there in the summer when it's beautiful, and down here in the winter when it's warmer. But, you know, there are options. So don't let your mind close down and just say, well, I'm not going to even consider it because it's cold. It's really an idea that time has come. Of course, uh, New Hampshire's slogan is the live free or die state. It's that mentality, it's that thing I was saying at the start. Um, it's the state where Ron Paul came second in both the Republican and the Democratic primary. Woo! 
it's also the state where he had the highest per capita vote, so there were the most people within the state that voted for Ron Paul in New Hampshire as compared to any other state. So, you know, we were out there, it was, it was February, it was January and February, it wasn't our warm season, and we were out on the streets with our signs, we were out with our green beam, which you can see over at our booth, which is booth 119, and it's got yellow balloons. Uh, so stop in there. The other thing about New Hampshire, so those are sort of the plugs for, you know, the general reason why the Free State Project chose New Hampshire. But now I want to talk a little bit about why, as an activist, or as someone who is really, really, really passionate about liberty, why you might want to consider moving there. First of all, thousands of us have actually already moved. We were like, we're not going to wait for liberty in our lifetime. We are passionate. We believe these ideas are the ideas of peace and prosperity. Why wouldn't you want to pursue those? You know, hey, you, know, you just want to hang out with your friends and create a sense of community. We're also reinvigorating the locals, the local people who live there, who, you know, for a long time, oftentimes people have moved from states like Massachusetts um, to New Hampshire to sort of escape ta Taxachusetts, as we like to call it. So, you know, we'd like Taxachusetts to keep the tax, you know, the mass holes, and we'll take all the liberty lovers. Um, and we're attracting the best and the brightest of the activists that believe in liberty and freedom. If you may have heard of some of these organizations, who here has heard of Coplock? All right, Coplock and our friends Pete and Adimo, and many of you may know Adam is currently serving uh, several months in jail for sticking it to the man, for being the one who, who was like, I am not going to, you know, I'm not going to take your crap anymore. I have principles, and you live in a corrupt and distorted and crazy world, but I have truth on my side, and I'm going to stand up for what I believe. And that's what he did. We also have Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live was a, you know, that, that radio show really turned me on. I mean, I've been a rebel since I was yay high. My parents taught me, you know, be a critical thinker, think for yourself, be independent. Uh, of course, now they think I'm crazy. <laughs> but, um, no, they don't really. But, um, you know, Free Talk Live is the place to go to get those sort of base ideas, those ideas of how does liberty work? How would this work? If we didn't have a government, how would we figure these things out? And so I love it. I think it's actually a deeply philosophical radio program. So Cop Block, Free Talk Live, all free staters, all movers, all fighting the good fight, even in the cold. Um, there are several other smaller organizations like Free Keen, Free Aid, Shire Sharing. What happens is activists come and they realize they're really passionate about something. We all have that burning thing inside us. Maybe you know, you're a strict constitutionalist and you want to talk to people about that. Maybe you're someone who's just decided, I've given up on this, you know, the system isn't going to work anymore. But whatever your passion is, you can come and make that real. By way of example, last year the Free State Project did a uh, Shire sharing program where um, you know, it was just a young lady who decided she wanted to start a, um, a turkey handout for Thanksgiving to help the needy. And so that's private charity. We raised the money ourselves and we fed the needy. So there are those kinds of activists as well. So I guess what I'm saying is whatever floats your boat, you could uh, come and make it happen there. So in my mind, there's sort of three arms to liberty or to achieving liberty in our lifetime. For, uh, for me anyway, and, and I'd be happy to talk to anyone afterwards, maybe you have other ideas, but you know, we, we can sort of go through the state system, so we can, you know, we can try and reform the system from within. 
And in doing that, um, so the three systems are, you know, we can work in the system, we can work outside the system through civil disobedience, or we can just, if you excuse my French, F the system by implementing free market agorist ideas where we just actually make the matrix and the system irrelevant to us. So. So, um, I just got the finger. <laughs> um, so I'll just talk very briefly about those three things in terms of what we're doing in New Hampshire. So within the system, we have 14 people currently in the State House. They've worked on bills that have done the following things. We have cut the budget of New Hampshire by one billion dollars. That's billion. Jury nullification, which is one of our last arms and our last stands against the tyrannical injustice system, is um, you know is enshrined as law from this from January 1st in New Hampshire. On the civil disobedience front, you know people are doing everything from 420 rallies to. I always want to say what Cop Block is doing is civil disobedience, but it isn't actually because you are allowed, it is quite legal under the First Amendment to film your public servants in public. And then in terms of free market agorism, the way I like to think about what we're doing in New Hampshire is we're trying to build Gulch Gulch. So if you have ideas, we have hacker spaces. If you, you know, have a business idea and you're like, I just need to find the right partner, you're gonna probably find that person with that mindset in New Hampshire. You know, New Hampshire, it's, it's so charming because, I, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's a little hokey, it's a small state, right? And you know, I've lived in really big cities and traveled over the world. And someone said something to me this week and it just charmed me because I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. Is we have high rises, we have skyscrapers in New Hampshire, but they're sideways because we have mill buildings. So you have a mile long building, but it's only two stories long. And every single one of those buildings have hundreds of little small businesses. If you have an idea and an opportunity, that is the place to come try it out. So, what are we looking for? We are looking for productive people from all walks of life. If you're a little jaded through your experiences, either through Ron Paul or, um, you know, and yay Ron Paul, don't get me wrong, but I'm just saying, what is next? And for many of us, what's next is to go to concentrate and to actually focus our attentions and our lives, not on something that's external, but something that's internal, on community, on choosing who your friends are, hanging out with people who have the same mindset as you, and then growing something from the roots up into a beautiful, beautiful beacon of liberty. So in conclusion, <laughs> Daddy's going to be like, no. <laughs> you know, Dr. Polo says, you can't stop an idea whose time has come, and it can't be stopped by any army or any government. I want to say to you here today, if you want liberty in your lifetime, move to the free state, move to New Hampshire. Carla knows I would let her speak all day if it was up to me. Seriously, research New Hampshire. This is an amazing state, and I'm sure she discussed some of the tax benefits of living in New Hampshire. But speaking of cop block,